you know, the younger players in this series is playing a guy who wasn't even born uh, the last uh, when he started in this league. What is it about him that allows him to do that? Well, it obviously, is his fitness level to begin with, his commitment to staying young, even though he's older. Um, that's his eating habits, uh, his you know preparation. And then you take that away, and he's a very intelligent guy, so he knows how the game's changed, and he's adapted. Um, some of his skating style, uh, how he has to manage the puck, how guys are quicker and get under him, and so how he has to move it differently. And that's probably it. Uh, and then you have the com competition factor. That's you know you can't measure a guy's will to to succeed. So I'd put that in you know fitness, intelligence, and then his just his love of the game and his uh, to will to succeed. Front right, Steven. Bruce, the way you guys have the amount of depth and of skill and speed throughout your lineup, can, you can go at opponents with waves. How do you adjust to their uh, to other team's adjustments when you kind of sense them maybe wearing down a bit? Like over the course of a series, how do you kind of change your approach to using that speed and skill when you when an opponent is opposing staff and team adjust? Well, I mean, we've tried to change lines to balance maybe the speed and physicality on if we need one, take one, front on an, another line. Uh, our breakouts, we will change. Um, whether our wingers get low or high, whether we need to support in 10 foot passes or make long rims, depending on what the other team's doing to us in terms of physicality. We're losing battles on the walls, past them, Marsha getting blown up on rims. Well, then we got, you know, those type of things. Um, but I, I got to tell you, we don't adjust a lot our game. And that's not being arrogant. It's just, you know, we've played a certain way all year. We believe it's successful. Team defense, hard to play against. Uh, how you hard to play against, usually how you manage the puck. Um, you know, uh, uh, discipline staying out of the box. Line changes come into that in the second period. That's been an issue for us. So, uh, but obviously in game, you know, there's certain things you got to do. We usually shift manpower around as opposed to trying to change the way we play every night. Now, there's always in games adjustments, so I can't, you know, tell you over the course of the whole series, every little one. Columbus, right? They, their D were, you know, sagging a little bit. They were forwards were tracking back early on. We didn't recognize that. All of a sudden, hey, we can start playing in front of these D, a little, you know, crisscrossing, um, inside drive to screen the goalie. All of a sudden, you know, we start getting a little better offensive opportunities because we're pitching it on net and we're getting there first. So there's a few little things you can do with St. Louis. Obviously, last night, I don't say it's an adjustment, but we started using our speed better in the second period, driving wide. Now all of a sudden we got them turning, but how did we get them to lose their gap? I think our four check was effective and we managed the puck. So again, uh, it usually starts with that, with our team. Front left. <clears throat> The uh, Tory Krug has been played over and over. It's kind of become an instant classic at this point. Do you have a greater appreciation of that hit on Robert Thomas, the helmetless hit, in comparison even to Bobby Orr? Um, there. Bobby Orr. Uh, well, that would be the ultimate compliment for Tory, being an offensive defenseman. But uh, it was a great part of the game. Uh, they had a good battle in front. Two guys going at it hard, and he, he came down the ice. I think he was actually joining the play to try to get involved offensively. A hit presented itself. He took it. Uh, looked clean from my angle, but with the no helmet, the way it went, yeah, it was old school. Um, I thought it was a, a good energy boost for our team. Well, the crowd enjoyed it. Uh, those you know hits usually are. They go each way. Um, good for Tory. He, he's had a, a, a real good playoff in terms of people know he's a puck mover. People know he's got power play acumen. Uh, but he's 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 played heavy minutes against good players every night. I think, you know, I, I appreciate that. His teammates appreciate that. He's building on uh, his overall game, and I think he's always wanted to do that. And this playoffs has has allowed him to sort of get out of that label of just an offensive defenseman. And he's been real good for us night in, night out. And he's always been a physical guy. I mean, I've seen Tory drop the gloves. Um, it's just they don't always present himself, and this time it did. Back left, Kyle. Uh, Bruce, I know at the start of the playoffs, you we were kind of curious what you were going to get out of Brandon Carlo, Connor Clifton, and I guess to a lesser extent, Matt Grizzlick. What have you made of their development over you know a relatively short period of time, but at the same time playing in a lot of big spots this spring? Well, I think Grizz is in that. I think it's fair to say he was a guy that got hit a lot last year. We weren't sure if you know if that over the course of a, a long run if he'd sustain it. We saw that with Carolina; they hit him. He kept bouncing back. Um, Brandon, we didn't know. Young guy, hadn't been in the playoffs. Uh, good regular season player for us, so we assumed he'd find his game. 
uh, Kyle. I didn't know if it'd be game one or ten or you know how long, how far along. Nerves were gone after the first game. He's been pretty steady. He's done what we've asked. He's kept it simple. I think that's why he's been successful. Uh, nerves don't creep into it. You know, he defends well. He kills penalties. Try to make a good first pass. He'll join when he can. But he's not worried about being something he's not. I think that's why he's been successful. Clifton, a bit of an unknown. We brought him up late. Knew he was competitive. Knew he could make some plays. Uh, didn't know how this the spotlight would be. But he's a hockey player. Uh, he just gets out there and he trusts his instincts. He, to me, is similar to Charlie McAvoy in the way he kind of just plays, tries not to overthink it. Um, and it's worked out well for him. Right side, second row. Bruce, are there things about Marcus's game that you can't realize until he's in your dressing room and, and on that you're working with him? And, and, and kind of what are those things and how has that expanded what you've done with him? Well, it, you know, we knew he was a talented player. Uh, I think the pace of his game, I didn't know he had that first step to, to separate. Uh, knew he was a good passer. He's actually got a great shot. I mean, we'd encourage him to use it more. He always looks past first. But um, I guess that part of it is to, you know, in traffic, he's, he's grabbed some pucks and got in and out of traffic and been able to get on the attack maybe better than I, than I would have thought. Um, and he's excellent over the blue line. He backs people off because of his speed. And he's made good plays to the second wave if we're able to get up. Pasternak was a good example last night, the seam pass. And he's attacked the net more since he's been here. He's, he's driving wide, taking it inside, willing to go to the net when the opportunity dictates. So a little greasier game. Uh, and I think that's been the, you know, the, the difference from maybe what we saw when he first got here. Back left, Dan. Uh, Bruce, it's eight wins in a row now. I'm curious, what do you look at as some of the common threads through this eight-game winning streak? Team defense, for sure. I think we've been able to, once we've gotten the lead, we've played the right way, played winning hockey. I'm going to guess through most of this, we've held our discipline, not got ourselves in a lot of trouble. I think there was one game in Carolina, we took four penalties in the first period. That was tough. Uh, Tuca had to really bail us out. Um, timely scoring, secondary scoring, everyone contributing up and down the lineup. I don't think you win... That many in a row, unless your goalie's standing on his head every night. Tuka's been rock solid, but I wouldn't categorize the game last night where he, he stole the game. Uh, he was good. They were both good goals, but I think our team uh, persevered and then played the right way once we tied it up. Um, we'll and not beating yourself would be the last thing. I don't think we've – second goal was an example of, you know, something we haven't done a lot of, and we were able to play through that one. We'll do a few more for Coach on the right side, fourth row. Uh, uh, Bruce, to follow up on the first question on Zeden Oshara, as a coach, how do you deal with those older guys? I know that you kept uh, Bacchus out for the first two games against Toronto, if I remember, uh, not, uh, yes, Toronto, if I remember correctly. Uh, is it tough for a coach to go to those older guys and make, make them understand what they need to change in your view so that they can still be effective in this, uh, in this uh, finals? Uh, Finals or playoff? Yeah, I've always thought the toughest part of a job is telling a, you know, a good player he's not in the lineup, or you know, a younger player that he's not going to be able to make the team. You got to go down, especially hard work and good character guys. David is that. We had a discussion in Philadelphia the first time it happened. I tried to explain my point of view, what we were thinking. Uh, we met again in Vegas, sat down, kind of away from the rink to to walk through it again to sort of build on that relationship. I like. I think David likes feedback. Uh, he's been a captain of the National Hockey League, so he's used to talking to the head coach. So I think that's helped, if you're honest. Why? Um, keep him up to speed on you know when you're going to use him and what situations. Uh, we used Kuhlman early against Toronto, went with a, a faster lineup. It didn't work. Well, I shouldn't say it didn't work. I think we split the games. But David came in later, uh, did a good job for us, added his element, his intangibles. Kind of mixed it up for a while, uh, and now he's been a, a real good player for us. Uh, so it's worked out. I, I think he appreciates the honesty. I don't think he agreed with the decision not to play right away. I'm not going to lie to you. They don't like that, any young or old. <coughs> so that's what, that's what I've done with David. Um, as for the guys that are in the lineup, the older guys, I think I've learned over the years that uh, – you know that communication is important with them. Ever, you know, on a daily, not a daily basis, but on on big decisions. You know, let's talk to them, uh, give them the room, and I think they've they earned that right long before I got here to have the room. Uh, they're Stanley Cup champions, so I wasn't going to mess with that, and they've done a real good job with that. Left side standing up. Bruce, uh, getting back to the group play, what goes through the coach's mind when he sees one of his better players finish a check without a helmet on? What's that, sorry? What goes through the coach's mind when you see one of your better players finish a check without a helmet on? 
Uh, I didn't see part of it, to be honest, because I just saw him flying up the ice, because that, that side of the ice is hard to see from the bench. But uh, it's happened a few times this year. We've got guys lost. I, I think it was Tori that mentioned that. Is that rule not coming in next year? Where you got I think it's in the American League. Um, safety concerns, obviously. But listen, I thought it was great. Uh, those are memorable moments. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fan at heart. So you see some stuff that's a little bit old school. Uh, good for the game as long as nothing dangerous happens. So. Uh, and it just shows the passion in the both players um, involved. Two more questions, right side, third row. Bruce, Tuca talks about the calm that he sees in the room and his teammates and on the ice. How nice is it to have such a, a calm presence between the pipes and the team in general? Well, you, you want to have that to, to not let games get away from you. I think there's, there's always in-game Every night, times where it can get away from you. For us, it was when it turned 2 nothing last night. We had to be real careful there. We didn't lose our discipline and really chase the game. So it was important for us. Uh, typically, you need your goalie to make the next save when it's 2 nothing uh, to give yourself a chance. Tuka has been excellent at that. Uh, I just think he's been real calm for a while now, on and off the ice, really um, even keeled. Got bumped a little bit a few times. Yeah, he's got upset with that, but he always gets it right back. And, uh, t and that's typically Tuca. Um, he had one episode in Providence. I was there for it a number of years ago. It's worth Googling. It's excellent. No crate. <laughs> but he's a long way from that as a young, I think he was 21 years old then. <laughs> Last question, third row in the center. Coach, um, nearly 80% of teams who've won game one have gone on to win the cup final. I know you want to take it one game at a time, but why do you think that number is as high as it is? What is it about setting the tone early that maybe alters the, the series? Well, that surprises me. I, I, I would wonder if that's the same in the series before that, to be honest with you. Is it? Because I always thought, you know, there's a game there that there's a feeling out, and as the series goes on, they seem to get more important. They all count, uh, and we're happy to have it. Uh, I'm not thinking that way that, you know, listen, we're, we're preparing for game two. We tried to execute well today in practice. Last night after the game, we talked, hey, enjoy our moment, but tomorrow's a new day. We're going to get back to work. And I think our groups approached it that way. I don't have a good answer for why it's 80%. Um, I think, like in a game, teams play better when they're ahead, a little more comfortable. You have a little rope. Uh, the other team gets a little maybe desperate, gets off their game. Uh, we were down to Toronto. Uh, we were down. I think two to one to Toronto, so it's not really one nothing, and two to one to Columbus, and we found a way. So we're not a. They were St. Louis was down two to one to uh, San Jose. So, to me, I haven't even thought of that part of it. It's game two. Uh, what do we do? To need to get better. I know it's kind of a, not really answering your question, but I'm not thinking about numbers, uh, and, and the end result. We're thinking about game two, how we can kind of be the better team. Thank you, coach. Yep.